Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is January 20th, 2016, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, more blowback from Fast and Furious as a 50 caliber rifle is found at El Chapo's hideout in Mexico. Yet another weapon that was funneled through the Obama administration's illegal gun smuggling ring. Then, more fallout from the water contamination crisis in Flint, Michigan. Government failed you, federal, state, and local leaders, by breaking the trust you placed in us. Plus, the war in Syria escalates as Turkish troops and military equipment cross the border. Hey, whose side are they on anyway? All that, plus the groundbreaking interview with Louis Farrakhan. Stop lying and start telling the truth to the American people and to the world. That's up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water, pairing the unprecedented super filtration power of an all-new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell. It removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants and hormones filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons stainless steel construction easy assembly low maintenance replacement filters are simple to install and now as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping this is a limited time offer so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off go to infowarsstore.com or call 888-253-3139 Operation Fast and Furious. If you watch this show, you've heard about it quite a bit. And no, I'm not talking about the Vin Diesel movies. I'm talking about Operation Fast and Furious that gave firearms to Mexican drug cartels under a sting operation. And we have a report here from Fox News. They say of the 2,000 firearms that were given to the cartels, 1,400 of those went missing. And one of them, or at least one of them, went to El Chapo. That's right, the kingpin of the Sinaloa drug cartel, and one of them was actually able to shoot down a helicopter. That was a 50 caliber rifle. It's a massive rifle that can stop a car or as it was intended to take down a helicopter. And they found this during a raid on January 8th and uh, in a raid that cost the lives of many of El Chapo's men and now he has been taken back into custody. So when, I think this is a perfect example for Obama's gun control policy, you know, for everybody who's trying to figure out what we need to do to really get people to realize and understand what this man is doing behind the scenes. He wants to have RFID guns. He wants to have GPS tracking guns. Uh, this 50 caliber rifle that they found in El Chapo's basement or wherever, it didn't have any fingerprint technology on it. And damn sure didn't have any GPS tracking technology. Otherwise, they would have found it a long time ago. And actually, I was reading some of the comments on that Fox News article. One person down at the bottom, he he put on there, he's like, yeah, everybody's freaking out about the 50 caliber rifle, but nobody's talking about the RPGs he had as well. Now, where he got those RPGs, I don't know. I'm not going to attribute that to uh, the ATF, but it's so ridiculous to me how they want to have so many gun measures here in the United States while they're arming ISIS, they're arming uh, these cartels, and uh, you have a very uh, delicate situation to where they say they want to track these firearms and see where they end up. Well, the only thing these firearms have led to yet is a stack of dead bodies, including Border Patrol agent Brian Terry. But they don't want to talk about anything like that. They just want to tell you how you need to have restrictions on your firearms in your personal home. Meanwhile, the people who are making all these laws from the city councilman all the way up to the president, uh, if they don't have personal bodyguards, they go to buildings with armed security which is to say if you were going to go to a city council meeting and for whatever reason somebody wanted to come in there and cause a ruckus, you have a security guard, a police officer on standby to deal with that situation. They have first responders in the building, but uh, if you're some uh, little old lady you know, who's riding the bus and some guy wants to come and attack you, you have no first responder. You have to call the police and wait two minutes for him to get there. And a lot of damage can be done in that time. And for more on this, we go to John Bound, who's going to break down this Fast and Furious and El Chapo connection. Oh. 
Where is El Chapo? The billionaire head of the Sinaloa drug cartel and the second most powerful man in Mexico after Carlos Slim. Well, he is sitting in the Altiplano prison after a raid on January 8th at a Los Mochis residence in northern Sinaloa. The raid netted two armored cars, two M16 rifles with grenade launchers, and two Barrett M82 sniper rifles. Fox News reported, when agents from the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives checked serial numbers of the eight weapons found in his possession, they found one of the two 50 caliber weapons traced back to the ATF program, sources said. Out of the roughly 2,000 weapons sold through Fast and Furious, 34 were 50 caliber rifles that can take down a helicopter. El Chapo would put his guardsmen on hilltops to be on guard for Mexican police helicopters that would fly through valleys conducting raids. The sole purpose of the guardsmen would be to shoot down those helicopters. This is the third time a weapon from the Fast and Furious program has been found at a high-profile Mexican crime scene. Now the U.S. Department of Justice, under the direction of Loretta Lynch, is in the middle of an extradition battle waged by U.S. attorney offices in New York, Chicago, Miami, El Paso, and San Diego. While Lynch, whose office, under former DOJ head Eric Holder, committed the first case of criminal and civil contempt of Congress due to his responsibility for aiding and abetting, the very drug lord Lynch claims to intend to prosecute. But Holder isn't in a maximum security prison. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton praises Holder by tweeting, From protecting voting rights to challenging discrimination, Eric Holder was one of our finest attorneys general, honored by his support. Hillary. Ah, the hubris of criminals. They just can't help themselves. Back in jolly old England, Mega corporate criminal Stuart Gulliver, who admitted in 2012 to laundering hundreds of millions of dollars for El Chapo's Sinaloa drug cartel. Where is Gulliver after the deaths of 100,000 plus and 20,000 missing Mexicans were funded by the monumental $376 billion of drug money HSBC handled for Wachovia? Gulliver is currently at the Davos Confab, still operating as the group chief executive of HSBC making decisions with 61 other criminal billionaires determining the amount of carbon taxes they will be fleecing from the unsuspecting populace. The Telegraph writes, Mr. Gulliver is on a panel on business and climate change. He appears largely supportive of the COP21 decree agreed at Paris in December, but says there cannot be a binary moment when everyone drops oil and gas companies. And Guardian journalist Jill Trainer tweets, Gulliver warns Davos of pulling out of all fossil fuel investments as they are providers of jobs and taxes. And Gulliver also says, The maths do work when asked about financing of green fuel at Davos. The public wants to do this, according to Global Mafia Chief Stuart Gulliver. As El Chapo sits in a maximum security prison, he has already escaped. He embodies the mentality of a global criminal organization Goliath that protects and continues to fund him. Because if and when El Chapo finally escapes, he will again be too big to jail. John Bound for Infowars.com. And from 50 caliber rifles going to cartels to grenades and rocket launchers going to ISIS, we see ISIS destroys 1,400-year-old Christian heritage site. Satellite photos obtained by the Associated Press confirm what church leaders and Middle East preservationists had feared. The oldest Christian monastery in Iraq has been reduced to a field of rubble. Yet another victim of the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria's relentless destruction of heritage sites. Yeah, we see them going all over. Uh, they're burning down Christian villages, uh, killing priests and doing all this stuff. And uh, we show the clip many, many times. We have to play it again. But you guys have seen the clip of uh, the grenades and all this stuff being airdropped. Two ISIS. They said it was supposed to go to the Kurds. We'll talk about the Kurds here in just one second. But however they got them, ISIS has them. And then a U.S. official was so bold to go on TV and say, well, uh, a pallet of grenades isn't going to stop the U.S. military. Yes, I do agree, but it's going to kill a bunch of unarmed Christians at these world heritage sites, uh, tear down their monasteries and all their artifacts. But nobody seems to care about that. Uh, they just want to continue to bring people here to the United States. And I understand you have a good heart and you want to bring people here. That's not my issue. My issue is when you bring people here, it's a half measure that does not address the root cause of why people are leaving 
Syria, Iraq, Yemen, Pakistan in the first place. You can bring everybody in the world to the United States of America, but it doesn't stop the foreign policy that is continue, continuing to blow up churches, uh, hospitals, wedding parties, uh, you know, giving guns to people who are running around, ripping out people's vital organs, making ISIS recruiting videos, lighting journalists on fire. We're aiding all these things, or should I say certain people in the government are aiding all these things. And then they say, we'll bring people here to make them feel better. And once again, yes, I understand if you have to worry about a drone coming up and blowing up your wedding party, you want to move, but we're not stopping the things that are going on. If you would stop the administration that's doing these things in the first place, people would be happy to stay home. People don't want to leave Syria. They don't want to leave Yemen and Pakistan. They want to stay safe in their own home countries, but they can't do that because of U.S. foreign policy. And as we we're talking about the shipment that went to ISIS that was meant for the Kurds, now we see Kurdish news, or supposedly meant for the Kurds, Kurdish news agency reports Turkish military advance in Syria. AFN News reported late Tuesday night, Turkish troops and military equipment crossed the border and entered Syria. Local sources reported the movement and said that ISIS gangs in the area were all unresponsive to the activity of Turkish soldiers and that they just watched as they moved. In December, the Turkish president promised to eject the Islamic State. We have a quote here from Neil Cotter. It says, Turkey proves itself de facto ISIS ally by bombing YPG, main opponent of ISIS headquarters in Syria. So uh, we've seen, uh, I believe it was the Turkish prime minister was caught on the phone talking about how he wants to give arms to groups like Al Qaeda. So we'll just have to see how things develop here. But there's really no simple solution to what's going on in the Middle East, or I guess any part of the world for that matter. But as I was saying before, if we stop the policies that is that are arming guys like ISIS and Al Qaeda, if we stop blowing up people's churches and weddings, uh, I think people would be a lot happier if we weren't there to playing Team America World Police, just throw us more of your tax dollars and we'll make it all go away. The people who live there know what's going on and they don't like it one bit. But it's not going on all around the world, at least not yet. We see people who are actually fighting back. And one group that's fighting back, the Christians, as we just said, they're tearing up, or ISIS is, they're tearing up Christian villages, monasteries, burning down the churches, uh, slaughtering the priests in the streets. But now we see a, a Christian militia calling themselves God's Red Defenders. They're taking up arms to stop the spread of jihadism in the Philippines. It says members of a cru Christian group have taken up arms in a bid to stop the Philippines from becoming a new breeding ground for ISIS. It comes less than a month after the jihadi group released its first video of a terror attack, or excuse me, terror training camp in the Filipino jungle. And uh, just after we saw the ISIS militants attack Jakarta. So, yeah, and I, I run into people every now and then. They say that it's unchristian to own a firearm or just to have uh, self-defense in general. And to that, I say Christ told his followers to go and buy a sword, not to have a, pre a preemptive uh, offensive violence. But he said, hey, go out and buy your sword. He actually said, sell your cloak and buy a sword if you do not have any other means to get one, which he was saying being armed. Once again, not saying go have proactive violence, but have a means to defend yourself. Also, we see in the Old Testament, uh, technically this is talking about Jews because Christ wasn't born yet, but they talk about King David and King Saul. Saul killed thousands and David killed tens of thousands in self-defense. Guys, uh, many, uh, many guys like Samson, many other people as well, but they don't want to talk about that. They just want to tell you that you're supposed to be a weak victim and let people step all over you. No, there's a time for peace and there's a time for war. If somebody comes to your front door saying that they're going to kill you, rape your daughter, burn down your church, yes, you do have the right to defend yourself and there's nothing wrong with that. And somebody who took this advice to heart, a good Samaritan, a pizza man, stopped a armed robber when he came into his vicinity. Matthew Wilhite, the son of a law enforcement officer, just happened to be prepared for an incident that would affect many lives. We walked up, the security was wrestling with this guy. He just didn't know it yet. Wilhite had walked into an armed robbery at the Fifth Avenue Mall. Police say the suspect was trying to steal expensive designer jeans. A security guard tried to stop him, and APD says the suspect pulled a gun. All of a sudden, he's screaming, gun, gun, gun. That's when Matthew Wilhite pulled his 45 caliber and pointed it at the gunman. Now let's talk about the truth. Some people say you can't handle the truth, and I guess one of the people that's concerned about this is Senator Marco Rubio. Senator Marco Rubio